Decades ago, one could die of a small cut if it got infected. The fight against infections was made possible by an accidental discovery of penicillins in the first half of the 20th century. This brought into existence a whole new class of medicines called antibiotics. People at that time referred to them as wonder drugs. It is thanks to these antibiotics that we don't have to worry about small paper cuts, big wounds. And we can recover very quickly from major surgeries. However, these wonder drugs are losing their power and strength, and have been doing it for a while, because of rise of microorganisms which have learned to resist these medication. These are called superbugs. The whole phenomenon of rise of superbug has been named as antimicrobial resistance. Or AMR in simple terms. And if we don't find a way to fight AMR or antimicrobial resistance effectively, even routine surgeries will become riskier, and potential medical advancements will be pushed back. As per the current trends, it is estimated that by 2050, 10 million lives could be lost to the resistant microbial strains. To put this number into perspective, it is more than the number of people dying of cancer today. I would like to suggest a new way of fighting these superbugs, one that is inspired by bacteria themselves, how they learn to fight the antibiotics, one that bridges biology and immunology. Infections come from bacteria. Bacteria are the single-celled microorganisms which have coexisted with us and are essential for our life. They exist everywhere. This room full of people also contains billions of microorganisms. They are on your clothes, on your chairs, on your phones, in the very air which we breathe. Don't worry, it's all harmless. Within our human body itself, the microorganisms could be wonderfully useful. For example, in digesting food, or terribly destructive, and some could be deadly. Many of us would have heard about MRSA, perhaps the world's best-known superbug, which can survive and thrive antibiotic treatment. But there are many more, like multidrug-resistant tuberculosis, gonorrhea. And Clostridium difficile, which is a gut bug that kills about 15,000 people a year per annum. Bacteria has evolved faster than our antibiotics. You know why? Because we have helped them. One of the major cause of this crisis is overuse or misuse of antibiotics. The use of antibiotics in the situations where they're not needed. Or using in the scenarios where perhaps some other medication is necessary. For example, use of antibiotics to cure viral infections like cold and flu, or animal farming. Therefore, a preventive and a behavioral action is much needed. So next time, if you decide to take an antibiotic on your own to cure your cold and flu. Please remember, you might be indirectly feeding the microorganisms to turn into superbugs. So remember to take your doctor's advice. So how can we reverse this trend? First thing to say is that we are not doing enough. There is awareness of the problem. The scientists are researching it, but bringing a new class of antibiotic into the clinical setting has stagnated over the past two decades. This is because of difficulty in demonstrating efficacy, or there are too many undesirable side effects. It takes a huge amount of money and time to bring a medicine from lab to patients. Especially for antibiotics, the challenge is even higher because of the evolving microbial strains. But even if our antibiotic pipeline is robust, I would like to suggest that we need 
new approaches. We should learn from bacteria themselves. So how did bacteria learn to fight our antibiotics? One, through mutation of their own genes, or by acquiring pieces of DNA that code for resistance from other bacteria. Yes, that's right. Bacteria can swap the entire genes from their neighbors, a process called horizontal gene transfer, very well known to the scientists. They do it fast, and they do it continuously. Hence, we need to find a way to fight back. We should use bacteria to fight against bacteria through another approach, which is very well known as vaccines. So here is my question for you: Do you think a new class of vaccine could be an effective response to the lack of antibiotic drugs? I believe the answer is yes. Vaccines have been one of our main allies for fight against infections. Most of us have a small circular scar on our arm from a vaccine that we received in our childhood. As a result, everyone alive today does not have to worry about some of the deadly diseases like smallpox. Through vaccination, we have made these diseases extinct. So the trick with the disease-causing bad bacteria like MRSA or Clostridium difficile is that we need vaccines that evolve at the same pace as bad bacteria. We have already seen this in the vaccine world. Think about the flu vaccine. The flu virus evolves and changes itself every year, and hence the vaccine needs to be adapted to match the evolution of the flu virus. Why can't we follow the same approach for bacterial vaccines? What I mean is, we need an ecosystem of evolving vaccines that can match the evolution of the superbugs. The vaccine producers should be capable of modifying their vaccine without need of any major work to match the evolution of the superbug. This can be done by simply following how the bacteria has changed over time and how it has evolved. Let me try to explain it in simpler terms. From immunology, we have learned how our body produces immune response or defends itself. Infection-causing microorganisms bear proteins called antigens. These antigens act as triggers for our body's immune system. To produce molecules known as antibodies, antibodies come and catch the antigen, fight it, and throw it out of our body, and hence protect us from getting any disease. So, antibodies are like well-trained soldiers to defend against the invasion of microorganisms. Think about this as an invisible shield around you. So, the vaccine producers effectively take. The microorganism and modify it just to render it harmless, but still remain recognizable to our immune system. So, through vaccines, we are training our innate defense mechanisms to fight off the agents of infection should we ever encounter them again. Let me give you an example: tuberculosis, the highest global burden of any infectious disease. It is fought with a vaccine called BCG. Which is almost 100 years old. Over the years, the multidrug-resistant strains of TB have emerged. The administration of vaccine does not provide any additional protection for these multidrug-resistant strains of TB. So, when the superbug gains resistance to our antibiotics, it undergoes change in their characteristics. Maybe the very walls of the cell change, or they start producing different enzymes. They do not remain the same antigen as before, so they become unrecognizable to the vaccines or the immune system, and hence the vaccines becomes ineffective. How can we compete with this evolution? 
From the microorganism itself, the scientists can learn how it is going to evolve in the future or how it has evolved in the past. Based on this, a model could be prepared. So when we are developing a vaccine, from this model, we can pick how the microorganism or the superbug is going to evolve in future and replicate it within the vaccine. As the superbug evolves, so does the vaccine. And this should give us a better protection. Now, vaccine research takes long, and there are many unknowns. But if we succeed, there is another additional advantage. There is no limit to the number of vaccines that can be given to an individual. After all, as humans, we are exposed to a myriad of microorganisms on continuous basis. Our body is fully capable of defending itself. You remember, I told you about billions of microorganisms in this room? Our body is fully capable of defending itself. All we are doing is taking advantage of the fact to ward off some of these emerging threats. If it works, we could have many protective shields around us which evolve at the same pace as the superbug. It is urgent that we act. The decreasing effectiveness of antibiotics would mean a catastrophic end to the medical advancements and simple surgeries will become riskier. We need to bring together the knowledge of biology and immunology and turn it into new vaccines that can copy the mechanisms uh, from what the superbug is doing. We can remove these bugs superpower, just like smallpox and polio before them, by the power of our own immune system, fully trained with the new vaccines. Thank you.